Well, when I was 21, um, this was 2003, my, um, my father dragged me to Close Canada. And my father had been among other types of music, a klezmo musician. And so I actually really grew up with the klezmo music in the house and with Yiddish around a little bit, but mostly the music. Um, so I was very familiar with the music itself. But, um, and in fact, pretty sick of it, you know, when you have to go to sleep with it at night and it's all. Um, and so when he said he wanted to take me to Klez Canada, I was really resistant. I didn't know anything about it. He had been doing some work with them at the time, so he knew High and Sandy Goldman. And, um, and I thought, oh, Dad, I don't speak any Yiddish. I don't know any Yiddish songs. I don't play an instrument. It's all going to be old people. Um, what, what will I do there? He finally convinced me by saying, well, at least we'll spend a week together. You know, I never, I, I don't get to see him very often since I'm an adult. And um, so I went and uh, I think I saw him for maybe a total of half an hour the whole week. I had so much fun. We drove up with Hi and Sandy and on the way up there Sandy said, oh Avia, since you're over 20 I've put you in with the scholarship girls, not in with your father. And I mean that was that, right? I made friends within half an hour and, and I've been back every year since. And that started me getting really interested about the culture. Um, what's interesting is that even from the very beginning it was a cultural curiosity. It never really became a religious curiosity. And um, in many ways, it didn't really affect the level of Jewish that I felt, um, the level of whether I felt personally Jewish. So from, from very early on in my kind of rediscovery of Yiddish culture, it was about cultural transmission and these kind of bits and pieces of memory that felt really right. And, um, you know, it felt right to learn Yiddish. I got really excited about the music. I started listening to it all the time. My way in was as a singer because I don't play an instrument. So I st my first year at Klez Canada as a scholarship student, I was singing and dancing. Um, and that coincided with the year that I went, um, started my first degree in theater. So going to university, suddenly I was looking at how I might access all these things through my art. Um, I probably more than anything, it was a sense of community and um, it felt warm and welcoming and inclusive and um, I found mentors there and the teachers very fast, people like Michael Alpert and Jeff Warshower and Adrian Cooper and Joanne Bortz were all really good to me in that first year and um, very enthusiastic about what I had to offer. and. Um, and um, right away I remember thinking that year that, that listening to the music and, and feeling something shift inside me and this, this feeling of, um, that people often use to describe Klezmer of the laughing and crying at the same time. And um, that's often used to describe the violin or the clarinet. Um, but what's interesting is that in, in theatrical speak, we often search for that moment. We're looking for that moment of laughter and tears at the same time, and that's thought of as this like great artistic catalyst, you know? That's the catharsis moment. Um, and to find that in music um, struck me as important. I don't necessarily find it in the music anymore. Um, it's possibly oversaturation. <laughs> um, but it, it felt like a moment where I needed to follow it. And, and I made a lot of friends in those first two years there who I am still in contact with. And um, I mean, what, this summer would have been my ninth year, I guess. And I mean, so at this point, a, a huge proportion of my community comes through my contact with Klez, um, my contact and, and later my work with Klez Canada.